we're going to talk about some benefits of reading the Bible. Something that's helped me in my Christian life more than anything is reading the Bible. Just taking the Bible out and reading it from start to finish. Or how, however it is that will cause you to read it. Whether it's reading a book of the Bible here and read a book of, of the Bible there. As long as you're reading the Bible, this is going to help you. And many times Christians will not read the Bible because they think that it's boring. Or because they claim that they can't understand it. Or they claim they don't have time with their busy schedule because of work because of family, because of friends, because of lack of sleep. Whatever the excuse is, Christians claim that they just don't have time to read it. Or they claim they're not smart enough to understand it. But I'm going to give you some benefits of reading the Bible, reading it even if you don't understand it, and even if you think it's boring. Uh, here are some benefits to reading it. Uh, number one, you won't sin as much. How would reading the Bible make you to sin less? Well, because if you pick up the Bible and read it, around the time you mostly commit a certain sin or commit your pet sin, then you'll have your mind occupied with something other than that sinful activity. Put the Bible on your bed. Put it on your end tables. Put it on your nightstand. Uh, have little Bibles laying around everywhere. Put one on your bathroom sink so when you're using the bathroom, just take the Bible up and read it. Have them open, even when you're not reading it. There is something about just seeing the Bible laying open on your bed or on a table that makes you more conscious of your sin. Romans 7.13 says, Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. The Bible makes sin look exceeding sinful, while the entertainment industry makes sin seem not so bad. A lot of people will leave the TV on even if they're not watching it. And... Most of the stuff on TV makes sin seem not that bad, while the Bible does the opposite. What if you leave your Bible open on your coffee table, on the dining room table, on the kitchen counter? Just seeing the Bible open reminds you that you're a sinner and reminds you that there's some things in your life that God doesn't want you to do. Just by picking up the Bible and reading it without even understanding it, it will cleanse you. The understanding and excitement will come later if you keep at it. Psalms 119.9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. If you just pick the Bible up and read the word of God and not even understand it, that occupies time that you would have probably been sinning and it reminds you, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody can understand that verse. There has been many times where I was reading the Bible at work, and someone came in the break room and started cussing, like they usually do. But immediately after they see I'm reading the Bible, they say, I apologize, I'm so sorry for cussing. I didn't know you were in here reading the Bible. So, what would make them stop cussing just because they saw me reading the Bible. It's because they know something is different about the Bible. Uh, what makes their cussing more inappropriate if I'm reading the Bible? It's the same amount of inappropriate even if I wasn't reading the Bible. It's just that the Bible reminds them that they are a sinner and that they are in the hands of an angry God. The Bible makes them more conscious of their sin. It would have been wrong for them to cuss had I been reading a magazine. But now I have also had other not-so-nice reactions to my Bible reading. Sometimes I'll be reading the Bible and people will say, Why did you bring that for? Why are you reading that for? 
why did you bring that to work? Shouldn't you read that at home? Uh, for some reason, they are offended by the book. And John 3.20 says, For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. It reminds them they are wicked, and the Bible is against their wicked deeds. And it reminds them that there is a final authority that they're going to have to answer to other than themselves. They don't like to see people reading the Bible. They don't like to feel bad about what they're doing. I've been reading the Bible in the locker room at work, and someone will come in and just stare at the Bible while I'm reading it with their eyes bulging out of their head. I had a conversation with a man, and he stared at the Bible that was in my hand like he was scared to death for the whole 15-minute conversation. They wouldn't have done that if I was just reading a magazine. Uh, that is the downfall of reading the Bible on a Bible app because it doesn't convict anybody. They don't know that you're reading the Bible. They think you're reading something on Facebook. But if you bring out the Bible, it's like it's screaming at the people that they're a sinner. It's like it's screaming at them that they're wicked. I guarantee you if you start reading the Bible every single day that you're not going to sin as much. 1 John 3, 6 says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Some say if you were truly saved, you wouldn't sin. And that's not true. It's if you abide in the things of God, you won't sin while you're abiding in him. How do you abide in him? Praying and reading the book. If you get in the book and try your best to keep your thought life straight as you're reading it, you won't sin during those moments. And now I'd be lying if I said I hadn't sinned when I was reading the Bible or praying. But those two things will help your sin problem like nothing else will. Number two, another benefit of reading the Bible is your mind will stay on God. There are people who walk through life and don't even give God a thought. The person who made the air that they're breathing, the ground they're walking on, gave them life. And you can read the Bible and be in Ezekiel and have absolutely no idea what you're reading or what it's talking about. And you will still be thinking about God and still be mindful that God is watching you. Having a Bible... In every room as a constant reminder that there is a God in heaven. Just having a Bible laying next to you in bed will remind you there is a God in heaven as soon as you wake up in the morning. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Having your mind on God will keep you at peace because you'll remember to pray. You'll remember to fellowship. If your mind is on God, you won't sin as much. Romans 1, 28 says, uh, that there are those who don't want to retain God in their knowledge. They want to be their own final authority. They want to answer to themselves and not to an almighty God. They don't want to be reminded of a future judgment for their sin. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be only any praise, think on these things. All of these things describe the Lord. And if you're not in the book, you can't think on these things. If your mind is on God, then you're not having filthy dreams. Filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Keep your mind on God if you want victory over your lust and over your fornicating thoughts and over your uh, backbiting thoughts. Uh, the word, You think about people badly and then those words come out of your mouth to backbite and devour another Christian. Because in your mind you start to get jealous and start to get mad at another person and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. But if your mind is thinking on things that are pure, of good report, things that are love, lovely, then your mind is thinking on the things of God. One of the things the Lord hates in Proverbs 6.18 is a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. You won't have those imaginations in your mind if your mind is staying on God through reading the Word of God. God brought the flood on the world because of the thoughts of men's hearts were only evil continually. And if you think on the Lord, then you'll think something pure. 
And this is without even understanding a word of what you even read. Say that you went in Second Chronicles and read all those names. Your mind stayed on God while you were reading the names. The Bible itself reminds you of God whether or not you understand the words that you just read. The understanding will come later. If you don't understand it now, then you'll understand it later if you keep reading it. If you're saved, then God will let you understand the book. You have to study. But number three, a third benefit to reading the Bible, you're obeying a Bible command. 1 Timothy 4.13 says to give attendance to reading. 2 Timothy 2.15 says to study to show thyself approved unto God. Deuteronomy 17.19 tells us a king shall read the word of God all the days of his life. And if you're a Christian, then you're a king. He's made us kings and priests. And there is no excuse not to read it, even if you don't understand it. And that's why the word study is in the King James Bible. You have to study it to understand it. Jeremiah 23.18 says, For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Knowing that it's a command to read the Bible, it's a sin not to read the Bible. Remember how I said you won't sin as much if you read the Bible? Just by reading it, you, you're not sinning. You're not breaking that command of not reading it. You're keeping yourself from that sin. That's one less sin you have to worry about if you'll just pick up the book and read it. Did you know that the Bible is the only book that you're promised to get a blessing for reading it? It says that over in the book of Revelation. If you pick up the book of Revelation and read it, you're going to get a blessing just for doing it. And you're obeying a Bible command. It's a command from God Almighty to read the Bible. The God that made the world took time to write a book. And He's given it to you. Why wouldn't you want to read a letter to you from the person who made everything that you see? You would read a letter from your favorite celebrity or athlete or from your secret crust or from your the person you're in love with. You would read those letters with no problem. Why couldn't you read a letter from the God who made the worlds? Number four, of number the fourth reason or benefit of reading the Bible is that it's entertaining. I know that you don't understand it all, and I know that some of it is boring to you, but that is because you don't know what's in it. It is the world's most amazing book, and the majority of Christians have no idea what's in it. They have no idea of some of the most amazing stories that are in the Old Testament. They've even been to church 40, 50 years, have never missed a service, and they don't know some of the greatest stories in the Old Testament. They have completely missed out. They've neglected Bible reading. One of the greatest benefits of Bible reading is that it's entertaining. And once you find out what's in this book, the fiction books and the movies just do not satisfy anymore. Because you know all that stuff's fake. And it's not as exciting as what's in the Bible. And the stuff's in the Bible actually happened and will happen. It is the world's most amazing book. Some people like the fantasy books and the fantasy movies and the sci-fi movies. But the Bible has that, only the fantasy is a reality. The fantasy stories just copy what was a reality in the past and what's a reality in the future. I love reading Genesis and reading about men who lived to be over 900 years old. That is interesting. Just to sit and, and think about and meditate on that what those guys could have accomplished in 900 years, how smart they would have been. That just blows my mind. I love reading how Moses split the water and turned his rod into a serpent. Being able to see that would be something amazing if God let us see that sometime in the future. And if you like action, you like action movies, the Bible has that. Read the book of Joshua and how they just took over. Uh, read how uh, Samson killed a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. Read how Shamgar killed 600 men with an ox goad. 
Read how the angel of the Lord killed 185,000 in one night. The Bible is written in a way that would attract men. It's not written in a way to attract sissy men. Real men love the Bible. You have been tricked by Hollywood and shows like Family Guy and The Simpsons. They got that nerdy dad on The Simpsons who is uh, supposedly a Christian and he makes Christianity and the Bible seem like something that's nerdy or not hip. And that's the tricks the devil plays on people. And that's how he brainwashes people mi people's mind and gets your kids to think that reading the Bible and that Christianity and living a holy life, they think that's nerdy and not cool. And that's a satanic deception. You have been tricked by Hollywood into thinking the Bible is boring. You have been tricked by the devil into thinking it is just a book that collects dust on your grandmother's bookshelf. Uh, one of my biggest regrets is not getting saved sooner and reading the Bible sooner. There was 21 years before I got saved where I had access to the Word of God and didn't get a hold of it. I didn't pick it up. Marking up your Bible and filling up a wide margin Bible with notes is one of the funnest, most satisfying things you can do. I can't think of anything more satisfying than getting a wide margin Bible and filling up an entire page with notes. Uh, no video game can satisfy that way. Uh, no sport can satisfy that way. Those games and the movies, they get old and out of date. The Bible never gets out of date. Say you learn a whole chapter of the Bible, get it memorized, understand it, have it marked up in your Bible. You can use the knowledge and information that you got from that chapter from the rest of your life. You can't do that with the hours you spend on video games and watching movies. That stuff doesn't benefit you down the road. Reading the Bible and learning it benefits you. Uh, the phrase, I'm so bored, never crosses my mind anymore. There is no time to be bored. There is so much Bible to be read, so many verse-by-verse -verse studies to put out, so much preaching to listen to. I can't even fit it all in my daily schedule. There is so much to do with the Bible. But number five, a fifth bene benefit of reading the Bible is it feels a hunger. If you're a Christian, then there is a hunger inside of you for the Word of God. Now, you may be fulfilling that hunger with the Word of God, or you may be trying to fill it with something else. The something else doesn't quite do it. And that is because the something else would be a sin. Even if the hobby itself isn't sinful, you're putting that hobby or activity ahead of the things of God and ahead of Bible reading so it becomes an idol and the pleasures of sin only last for a season nothing else can give you that full feeling that you need like reading the word of God if you're a Christian and you can't replace Bible reading with a Bible movie there's some people who think well I, I don't really want to read the Bible it's boring and I'm just not a reader so I'm just going to watch this movie about the Bible you can't replace it with that and you can't replace it with TV preachers because they're not even giving you the Bible uh, TV preaching is the most boring thing you could possibly listen to I remember when I first got saved and I didn't know about all the preaching that was out there that I could get my hands on so I would turn on a TV preacher and it it'll get you backslid it'll get you out of wanting to read the Bible. That's how boring it is. It is actually boring to listen to a TV preacher. Uh, no wonder the average man wants nothing to do with Christianity or the Bible because he sees the effeminate sissy preaching on TV by Creflo Dollar and Kenneth Copeland and all that junk. And it just, it it's a major turnoff for him. No wonder. Uh, real men love the Bible because the Bible is a manly book. There's things in the Bible. The way the Bible's written, it's written how a man would like it. The stuff on TV is fake and doesn't represent true Christianity and true Bible preaching. Jesus said in Matthew 4.4, 4, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And if you're not reading 
the Bible, then you're starving yourself. Psalms 119.103 says, How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. And you need the milk of the word. 1 Corinthians 3.2 says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither, neither yet now are ye able. But ye also need the meat. Uh, Hebrews 5.13 and 14, For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Some go to the meat before getting the milk, and that will mess you up. And then some neglect the milk and only take the meat, and that messes them up. And then some only want milk and forsake the meat, so they never grow. You need all the Word of God. You need the milk and you need the meat. You need to listen to all kinds of preachers. Quit being so puffed up and self-righteous and such a know-it-all. And listen to any King James Bible preacher you wouldn't normally listen to. Uh, get you some of the camp meeting crowd preachers like Sammy Allen. Get you some of other kinds of preaching where, they, where they're more soft spoken. I mean, as long as they're King James Bible preachers and they got the right gospel, you can listen to them. I listen to all kinds of preachers. I listen to Danny Castle, uh, Peter Ruckman, David Hoffman, Bevins Welder. I listen to Jeff Owens. I used to listen to Jack Hiles. And if you say a name like that, everybody goes crazy. I listen to Robert Breaker, um, my pastor, Donnie Dalton. I listen to him every Sunday and Wednesday. I listen to Brent Carr, C.T. Townsend. You know, all these great preachers out there that you have access to on the Internet, uh, but you hear, well, somebody says something negative about them, so you just write them off forever. You can listen to preaching. You need to mix it with Bible reading. And both of these things together will cleanse you. It will help take your sins, your pet sins. They won't be as much of a problem. It will help your mind stay on God. It will keep you from getting into mischief. But there's so many benefits to reading the Bible. And people are neglecting the Bible. Uh, there may come a time when we don't have access to the Bible. They may take the Bibles. Hopefully, that never happens. Hopefully, the rapture will happen and takes us out of here before our Bibles are taken away. But that time may come and we need to have the words of God hid in our heart so that we can still go over them in our head when we're going through times of trouble in case that day comes. But some people, most Christians don't have hardly any of the Word of God in their heart. They don't know any of those great stories in the Old Testament. They don't know how to tell somebody how to be saved, even though they're saved themselves. They couldn't tell you where the gospel is in 1 Corinthians 15. They couldn't even tell you what the gospel is. They know Jesus died, and they know he died for them. But if you used to say, where's the gospel in the Bible? They would say, I don't, I don't know. They, would, they, they don't even know the definition of gospel. All they know is what they see on TV, the Kardashians, Dancing with the Stars, Family Feud. They're watching filth on TV, and their mind is full of junk. So they can't get interested in words on paper. They have to have stuff jumping out and music in the background and stunts and HD and special effects. But the Bible is the world's most amazing book. And if you can get into the Bible, if somebody can get you interested in the Bible, then that is the greatest gift someone can give you outside of giving you the gospel and leading you to Jesus Christ. If you can find a preacher or something to help you get interested in the Bible, then stay listening to that preacher or doing whatever it is that you're doing to keep you interested in the book. Maybe getting a new Bible every so often will keep you reading the Bible. Some people get new Bibles every couple months. If that helps you stay interested in the Bible and keeps you reading it, then keep doing that. Do whatever you got to do to stay in the book. But this has been Benefits of Bible Reading.